All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 22. And in this lesson, uh, we begin a series of, I guess it's four or five videos, where students are gonna kinda take a break from that standard division algorithm, and we're gonna move towards some vocabulary that's really important in fourth, and, uh, fourth grade and beyond. Things that vocabulary like factors, multiples, products, we're going to be talking about the divisibility rules. And so this video starts a series of maybe four videos uh, where we begin embarking on a slight detour from that division algorithm. So let's begin talking about <clears throat> factors and products. So the idea might be, let's say you have 12 dots. Okay, so this is a stack of 12 dots. This is a stack of 12 dots and this is a stack of 12 dots. And I want to arrange those dots into the shape of a rectangle, a closed and closed rectangle. Well, I have some choices, don't I? So one choice is I could say, well, let's do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and I'm not quite done, one, Two. All right, so there I've got my little array. And what does that array look like? Well, that, that array is, I can write it as a 6 by 2 array because 6 times 2 equals 12. In fact, let's put in that equals 12. Well, what's another way we could arrange our dots? Well, another way we could arrange our dots is we could say, okay, 1, 2, 3. Then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's another way I could have arranged my dots. And so what's that? Well, that's four times three equals 12. And then parents and teachers, when our students are looking for that next array, it's really hard, and this is the one that is the oftentimes the last one that students find, and it's, in a lot of ways, the easiest one, which is why it's so stinking hard to find, but it's this one right here. <laughs> Squeeze that in right there. And so what, if, what is that? Well, of course, that is a 12 times 1 array, so 12 times 1. So the idea would be the factors of 12 are 6, 2, 4, 3, 12, and 1. So these are the factors of 12. And the idea is that 12 is the product, all right? So these are two important words that we want students to recognize, uh, factors and products, at this point in the game. Uh, and that's enough said on this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and practice. So um, at this point, they've kind of switched over to pure numbers. Um, but if, if your students, for differentiation purposes, if they still need to use color tiles, uh, to help them uh, find the factors, please let them do it. Now the idea would be, let's think of all the ways we can make 14. Well, we could do 2 times 7 is 14. We could do 1 times 14 is 14. Is there any other way that we could do make take two numbers? It's always got to be 2 at this point and multiply to get 14? Nope, we've got them all. So the idea is we're supposed to list our factors, record the factors of the given numbers as multiplication sentences, that's what I just did here, and as a list in order from least to greatest. So the idea is these are our factors, and they would like us to order them from least to greatest. One, two, seven, and 14. Now we know we're kind of right because every number, every factor has a partner. 
Now, there is going to be an exception. I'll talk about that later. Um, but right now, since every factor has a partner, it probably means we've found all of them. So really, we're supposed to list that here. So we're going to write the factors way over here. So 1, 2, 7, and 14. And because we have more factors than just 1 and 14, because we have a couple of arcs here, uh, we know that this is a composite number, that 14 is composite. So remember the difference between prime and composite? Composite means <clears throat> you have a list of factors that is more than just one and itself. I'll, I'll give an example of that in a second. So let's do 20. So let's see, 20, hmm. Well, we could do one times 20 is 20. We want students to start thinking of that first. <clears throat> they could do two times 10. Mm. <clears throat> three times seven is 21, so we can't do three. But we could do four. Four times five is 20. <clears throat> so parents and teachers, this is a good example of how knowing our multiplication facts is so essential. Uh, so this might be a good time to, for homework, make it, maybe cancel your Eureka Math homework and allow certain students the time to just practice their, their flashcards for um, memorizing and learning their multiplication facts. So, what are their factors? And we're going to do them in order from least to greatest. Well, we've got 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. And we kind of know we're right because 1 has a partner, it's 20. 2 has a partner, it's 10 and four and five are partners, so everybody has a partner, so that suggests that we're probably right, we probably found everything, and because our list is a long list rather than just one and itself, that means we know it's composite. So, a couple of exceptions that we need to talk about. One exception, <clears throat> well, let's talk about primes, okay? And so I'm gonna scooch this down and I'm going to make up my own example here. So let's say we do uh, 13 is our number. Okay. So how do we make 13? Well, the only way you can make a 13 with whole numbers is 1 times 13 is 13. That's the only thing that works, which means if we're going to arrange our factors in order from least to greatest, 1 is the least, 13 is the greatest, we have partners, we're good, which makes this prime because the only two numbers, the only two factors that exist is 1 and itself. All right. Now, another example, uh, a little tricky um, exception, how about the number 25? Well, what are the ways we can multiply numbers to equal 25? Well, we could do 1 times 25, that's 25. Then we could do 5 times 5, that equals 25, and we're done. We found them all. So let's list the factors in order from least to greatest. Well, 1 is the least, then comes 5. 5 comes again, so we don't need to write it and then 25. So here's the, the, the reason I bring this one up is because one has a partner, it's 25. Now five, he is its own partner because five times five is 25. And I love this, I'm just seeing it now. That kind of looks like a smiley face and a nose and some eyes or something like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, so anyway, um, this is definitely composite because the list includes more than just one and itself, it also includes five. Okay, so that's the idea. <clears throat> and teachers, remember, if your students need to differentiate by you giving them color tiles, by all means, give them color tiles so they can actually build the rectangles. 
Real quickly, <clears throat> we're just supposed to list all the factor pairs. Uh, let's do all the factor pairs for 21. So that's 1 times 21. Uh, let's see, 2 times 10 is 20, so that's no good. But 3 times 7 is 21. Uh, 4 times, well, 4 times 5 is 20, so that's no good. And it looks like we found them all. By the way, <clears throat> is this, is 21 prime or is it composite? Well, the answer is it's composite. Because it's got two entries here rather than just one entry. Now, if we wanted to, we could do 19. The only way you can make 19 is 1 times 19. That automatically makes this prime. And the last sl slide on this video, uh, Julie, she's got 27 grapes to divide evenly amongst three friends. So she's got three friends. So it's 27 being divided up amongst four people. Because here's Julie and here's her friends. All right. She thinks there's going to be no leftovers. Use what you know about factor pairs to explain whether or not Julie is correct. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this. It says just she's dividing evenly amongst three friends. It doesn't say she's sharing with herself. So I'm going to cross that off. So she's only sharing 27 amongst her three friends. And since 3 times 9 equals 27, that means there's going to be no leftovers because we know each friend is going to get 9 grapes. And that's how we know that Julie is correct. There's going to be no leftovers. And that wraps up fourth grade module three lesson 22 the first video in a series where we're talking about factors products primes composites all that sort of stuff